In this video, a VHF oscillator made to work between 78 and 95 megahertz or higher or lower, that depends. And the good thing from this oscillator is that it needs no coil. I've experimented a lot in the past to make a broadband oscillator on frequencies in this range and even lower. So from 50 megahertz up to 100 megahertz. And the coil was a kind of disturbing element um, with which the bandwidth from that oscillator was far too low. So finally I found this circuit in which the oscillator is tuned by a potentiometer here. And this capacitor here sets the whole frequency band. So this is a very critical uh, device, critical electronic uh, component to get the whole circuit working in the frequency bands that you like. Here you see how the whole circuit finally was made. And I could get in this frequency band 78 up to 95 megahertz. Uh, I have to say that this is a circuit for real radio amateurs, people that like to do experiments. So don't want to copy um, a certain circuit from a magazine or so. And here is how the whole circuit was made. At first we go back to the circuit. Here is a decoupling unit, BD139, with a 100 microfarad cap at the base. Also decoupling and prevention that the whole oscillator strays uh, VHF into the power supply lead. This is also kind of decoupling two resistors and here is the oscillator um, at its base, at its basic uh, components. You can go to lower frequencies than 78 megahertz when you make this cap bigger. And here you see the values that I found for the different frequency bands. Here the, the output 1k potentiometer and here the output to the scope. So here the circuit, uh, how it was made. It needs some explanation. At first make uh, a piece of template and glue that to a piece of triplex. That's the best way to make it. Of course you can also make it with copper cloth board. I did not uh, test that. I tested quite a few potentiometers from different values for this potentiometer. I tested 1k5, uh, 4k7, 10k, uh, 25k and 50k, but 25k was the best value. And also here with these two resistors uh, they prevent that the oscillator stops at a certain frequency. So this is also a kind of critical circuit, not very critical. When you want to make it use a piece of uh, tin plate or, cop or copper cloth board, solder the potentiometer here in the middle and solder all the components directly to the metal uh, board, the metal shielding, the tin plate. This part here is quite critical. I've made it a few times and also um, in such a way that I soldered all the components directly to the, to the hood from the potentiometer. That did not work good. But when you solder everything directly 
to the, the, the metal plate there's no problem. And here is the decoupling unit that's here. That's in fact here, decoupling unit. Here are all the output connections. The 1K potentiometer here. Uh, one socket output, the other socket output. And here, now in the middle of the screen, is the power supply lead. Sorry, the power supply. I want to demonstrate the power supply. It's very important. You need a good power supply, 24 volts. And this is the way that I made it. Uh, 12 volt here, a voltage doubler here. Made with two silicon diodes, 5408. Here a 40, for, sorry, a 4700 microfarad cap at 50 volts. Also a made dead for high frequency back coupling by this cap here, 100 nanofarad, and this resistor, 470K. And this is visible in this part of the circuit here. So I hope the schematic is uh, clear at the moment. I want to demonstrate something from this circuit. This is the front. And here I set the, the output level here with this potentiometer. Here one socket to the scope, another socket to the counter, that's here. And I've made a switch here to get to different frequency bands. And though this is an, a low frequency switch, it works good. Um, and the reason is that the contacts here in this very, very simple uh, switch slide along um, electrodes that gives a good um, contact. Um, so let's try and see what happens. Here is the screen, sorry, the, the front again. I turn the potentiometer now and we are looking at the oscilloscope. I have to stabilize it somewhat, the scope. And we are going through different frequencies now. We can correct the sine wave somewhat with the potentiometer. We go to another frequency band that's here, a lower band, and again you see the sine wave that's generated here. Uh, I think it's a quite good sine wave for experimental purposes. Of course you cannot expect everything from such a simple circuit with one transistor. But the whole uh, thing is in my opinion quite useful. So I wish you luck when you want to make it. It's an experimental circuit and this is the best way to make that circuit and I've explained that earlier. I wish you luck.